Hey everyone, welcome back to Web Inspect. I am Timothy Miller, your host, and today we're going to talk about another handy security thing that Keybase makes easier. So today we're going to learn about signing commits in Git um, and pushing them up to GitHub, where we can where we can verify that we have signed them and that everything worked out as well as it should. And this is actually kind of a big personal victory for me because I used to I used to work. Well, let me show you what it looks like first. So if we come in here. This is what it's going to look like. So when you push a commit like this, a message to GitHub, it'll tell you right here that it's been verified. And you can click on this, and it'll show you it's been signed by a verified signature. So what this does is it essentially tells anyone who's looking at your commits it gives them the ability to verify that it was actually you, that you are actually who you say you are. Um, so, And this is something that Keybase makes a little bit easier for us. Now, as I was saying, this is kind of a personal victory for me. I used to work on a, a fairly large team of developers. We all worked on the same website. There were probably there were over a dozen of us working on the same website, and I was the main I was the main front end guy. I was the lead. All of the main front end decisions went through me. Anyone who wanted to make a big decision about the front end had to talk to me first. So I was the main front end guy, and there was another guy who was a back-end programmer, but also knew a fair amount about front-end. He knew just enough to be dangerous, and he would always question every decision I made. And I always had good rationale behind my decisions, so it wasn't that big of a deal, but I was always slightly intimidated by him. I never really knew what to expect from him. And one thing that he would do that kind of annoyed me at the time was he set up his Git pushes so that they would be signed, and he would have this green verified button next to all of his commits and none of the rest of us did and it kind of seemed like a power move to me I, I don't know if that's actually what it was but it's kind of what it seemed like it made made me feel bad that I somehow wasn't able to do this thing but now I can do this thing and it's really not as difficult as I thought especially when using Keybase here's a really handy article on GitHub written by this guy P Stadler and he has this GitHub repository Keybase GPG GitHub and it is a compendium of information on how to do exactly this. And he does go through setting up your GPG key, which we've already talked about. There's a video that we did. I'll link it up above. So assuming you've gone through our GPG video, this is actually a fairly simple process. So we can come down to set up git to sign all commits. And what we want to do is there are two things we have to do. We have to tell GitHub what our public key is for GPG. And that tells GitHub, that gives GitHub a way of verifying your signature. Then we have to tell Git on our local system how to sign those things and how often we want to sign those things. So that's what this is doing here. This is setting up your local Git. So Git config and you set up this user signing key and you give it this. So if we come into our terminal here, we can do gpg list secret keys. We run this command. And it gives us all this all this information. All you need from this is your ID, which you can see this RSA 4096 slash. It's everything after that slash. So we copy this. And then we've got these two commands here, git config user signing key. So that's where we want to paste that. So git config global user dot signing key. And you paste that ID from your GPG key in there. And just like that, You've told Git how it's going to sign your commits. So the second command is kind of optional. This is telling Git that you want to sign every commit. And you don't necessarily have to do this. Sometimes this gets in the way. I like to set this on a repository basis. So I've got some repositories that I sign all of my things and some repositories where I don't. And I set this on a local config um, on a local config basis. So the way we do that is we would go to a Git repository that we want to sign all of the commits for. So I've got this code challenges code repository. So we do git config commit dot gpg sign true. And that sets it just for this one repository. So it doesn't force you to sign all of your commits, but it does expect you to to sign your commits for this one repository. That's the way I prefer to do it. You can also sign commits on a commit by commit basis by using the S flag. So git commit S, and that will sign your commits also. But I generally like to do it 
per repository. So now that we've got that set up, we need to set up our GPG key on GitHub itself. So GitHub can know that we are signing it with the correct key. So we go to our settings in GitHub here, and we scroll down to SSH and GPG keys. And you can see I've got a bunch of stuff in here, but GPG keys has its own special section. We click new GPG key, and then we want our public key block. And if we switch back to this article, it actually gives us like instructions for how to do that. Keybase, PGP, export, Q, paste that key, and then copy it to your clipboard. So and that copies your public key to your clipboard. And then you can just come over here, paste that in here, add it. I've already added it, but that's the process you go through. It'll ask you to enter your password, and then you'll have it added to your GitHub account, um, just like that. Easy as that. Now, the rest of this article is mostly troubleshooting stuff. This is if you want to put your key on another computer. Um, this is all these different options that you may or may not need. So these are things that could be useful for you. I didn't really use any of these things, um, but they could be useful. So I'll link this article below so you can see it and read through it if you need to. Another thing that I should tell you, when I was running through this the first time when I was setting this up, I was having trouble because when I would when I would try to sign a commit, it would give me this error. GPG failed to sign the data and fa failed to write commit object. And I think it was doing that because I had multiple versions of GPG installed and it was a little bit difficult to sort all of that out. Here's a really good stack overflow that kind of helps with some of this stuff. But what they actually suggest didn't end up working for me. What I actually had to end up doing was installing or brew install GNUPG like that. And it gave me, it told me that wasn't installed already. So I had to install that. And then it told me that I needed to link it up. And I linked it up. And then I uninstalled, uninstall GPG. Oh, actually, I did this the other way around. I uninstalled GPG. And then I installed the GNUPG. And I linked GNUPG up, and that seemed to fix my problems. So maybe that'll help you. If not, the Stack Overflow has a lot of really good troubleshooting methods for you if you have troubles with this. But ultimately, after you have given GitHub your public key, and after you've set up your local Git to use that, that same key, then it should start working. And one good way to test it, which is actually what I did over here, is to do git commit allow empty. And this allows you to create an empty commit message. So, and then I'll just go another test for signing commits. And then you write and quit because this is Vim. And you can see it worked. So you can see when you commit it, it doesn't actually tell you that it signed it. So that's a little bit mysterious. There are actually a couple ways that you can check and make sure that you, you signed it. So if I do git log, and grab this commit ID, then you can actually run a command, which is git commit verify. Ah, no, I got it backwards. So it's git verify commit. And then you paste that ID in there. And it will tell you there's a signature, and it's a good signature from me. That's one way you can do it. You can also just push it up to GitHub. And if you're using GitHub for this, reload your page, and you can see the nice, pretty little green button. And this makes me proud to be one of the smart ones who can sign his commits. Now, why would you do this? I'm honestly not quite sure. I, I know I'm sure you would do this in situations where you work for a large company with a corporate target on its back and you have a lot of hackers potentially trying to insert malicious code into your repositories, then signing your commits could probably be a really good idea because then you can make sure that every commit that comes into your system comes from exactly where you think it does. So. That's a good thing. It's a good security thing. I'm sure there are more reasons to this, more reasons that I, as not really a guru security person, could tell you. But we live in a time of lots of leaked passwords all over the place and lots of leaked data and very flimsy databases full of passwords that, that hackers have gained access to. And probably a lot of your passwords have been compromised in the past. past. So. Every little bit of extra level of security is going to benefit you more than it is going to hurt you. So I highly recommend you guys to do this. Whether you use the signature or not, it's good to have that set up, good to have the ability to sign your commits. And 
like I said, Keybase just makes it so easy. So that's all for today, guys. I hope this is useful to you. If you like what we're doing here, give us that thumbs up. And um, we will be back with another Tooling Tuesday next week. Guys, remember, this stuff is complicated, but you can do this too. Don't get discouraged. Don't stop learning. Bye.